Our next speaker is Dr. Sharif Ali. Uh, Dr. Ali is an assistant professor in veterinary epidemiology and biostatistics at the School of Veterinary Medicine, uh, Uni University of California, Davis. He earned his Bachelor of Veterinary Science from Cairo University and practiced two years at the largest dairy in North America before completing an internship at the Canine Veterinary Teaching Research Center at the University of Idaho. Uh, he then completed a residency, a Master's of Preventive Medicine, and a PhD in Epidemiology at the University of California, Davis. Uh, he researches cattle health, specifically risk and transmission of infectious diseases using statistical and mathematical models. Other areas of interest include foreign animal disease preparedness and animal welfare. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, so first I would like to give a, acknowledge the uh, collaborators uh, from the BRD CAP grant, USDA NIFA funded and funding also from the University of California Agriculture and Natural Resources, the ANR, for this data that will be presented today. So I won't go into pathogenesis and impact. My colleagues have done a better job than I would ever do. So I'll just jump into diagnostic challenges here. And basically, it's the variability of the presentation, as we all would agree, variability in severity, stage, and even between individual animals that may have the same clinical signs. Uh, expensive diagnostic tests and add to that variability between the observers or the raters of the calf that is uh, being examined or looked at on that day. So that's what constitutes challenges. So we set to try to uh, work with scoring systems to minimize some of these challenges or address them. And so there were previous uh, scoring systems developed, uh, including Dr. McGurk's uh, scoring system just presented in the previous talk. There's the DART also was mentioned today a few times. Um, and then there's another one also by Thomas et al., uh, also used, but I've seen it more used on research side. Um, so with that said, our objective was to develop a, a simple standardized scoring system to diagnose bovine respiratory disease in pre-weaned calves uh, using a quantitative approach, and I'll explain that here in a minute. Also to uh, estimate its sensitivity and specificity, so its diagnostic accuracy. And the long-term uh, goal for us was uh, to incorporate this scoring system into a risk assessment tool uh, that could be used on uh, dairies or calf ranches to produce a customized set of recommendations for that specific facility on how to control or prevent uh, BRD. So I'll first talk about the scoring system design. Uh, this was... Uh, BRD uh, CAP grant uh, trial, one of the many trials and studies that are, were done and are actually being done and will be done, but this one was in California uh, in a calf ranch, about 70,000 calf ranch, uh, uh, between 27 and 67 days old is the enrollment age for the Holsteins that we enrolled. This is a calf ranch that gets male calves from all over the western U.S., and it, they all go to feedlot after that, so it's kind of custom raised. Uh, the data was collected between July 11 and January 2012. And we collected BRD and uh, some other health-related variables in this matched case control study design. So we actually used uh, uh, Dr. McGurk's scoring system, which is, uh, she explained it before in the previous talk. So clinically ill animals were selected uh, based on a Wisconsin score of greater than or equal to five. And clinically normal animals, uh, they, uh, they were actually a matched pair for that case. And they could have scored anywhere from zero to four. We also collected some uh, swabs for microbiology, virology, and bacteriology. We collected the nasopharyngeal swab, uh, so basically from the nasal cavity. And then the pharyngeal recess swab, which was a guarded swab that uh, went a little bit deeper into the recess. So for uh, viral PCR, we used, uh, we tested for BRSV, IBR, bovine coronavirus, and BVD. And this sample was uh, collected from both the nasopharyngeal sample and the uh, pharyngeal recess swab. For bacteriology, we only used the pharyngeal recess because it was guarded uh, just to prevent the commensals in the nares. 
And so we looked for Pastorella Maltasida, Manimi Hemolytica, Haemophilus Somnus, and B. Trehalosi. And identification was based on colony morphology and biochemical tests. And for mycoplasma culture, uh, we used the pharyngeal recess only and was confirmed using, using the digitonin test. So case definitions, they would have to have met, uh, be a BRSV positive, uh, had an aerobic pathogen positive and a Wisconsin score of greater than five. So either a BRSV positive on its own or aerobic pathogen positive and a Wisconsin score of greater than or equal to five. And another option would have been a mycoplasma positive and a Wisconsin score of greater than or equal to five. So what we took in the, the data in the analysis, we weighted the scores by the coefficients using regression models. So uh, in the previous uh, 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 scoring uh, talk, Dr. McGriff talked about the scoring system ranging from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. For us, we gave those numbers based on what the models uh, estimated uh, occurrence of the, the, the chances or odds of, uh, of uh, BRD happening in that camp. And so it had to be a conditional logistic regression model because of the matching to account for that uh, matching that happened. And I won't go into much details of that. Um, but the BRD variables that were finally selected in the final models uh, were nasal and ocular discharge, rectal temperature, ear and head positioning, being whether there's a tilt or an ear droop, uh, and cough, and abnormal respiration turned to be significant also. And for abnormal respiration, it wasn't that it was a specific cutoff for tachypnea or dyspnea, but rather it was in compared, to, compared to adjacent calves at that time of the day uh, uh, during that time of the enrollment. So any increase in if the calf seemed to have uh, a higher breathing rate or having a little bit more dyspnea than uh, other calves, in that case it would be a positive for abnormal respiration. So there were three scoring systems developed. Actually, uh, the first one, uh, which is, uses all of these variables in terms of dichotomous nature, meaning present or absent, abnormal or normal, uh, and it required inducing off cuff. In BRD2, it was also dichotomous variables, except for the nasal discharge, which the model uh, was better fit in, with uh, three level for nasal discharge, being normal, mild, and moderate slash severe nasal discharge. That BRD2 did not require BRD, uh, inducing cough. And the third system, BRD3, which is kind of our final system that we project for use, it doesn't require inducing cough, and all the variables are dichotomous. Okay. So I'll jump the, the scoring system design because basically, it, in summary, it's the coefficient that comes out of the model that's used as the score. Uh, that's the summary of that. And so the individual calf's total score is the sum of the clinical signs that are uh, observed. So for the cutoff to be used, uh, what cutoff should we use for a positive BRD case? Uh, that was determined using receiver operator operating characteristic curves. And we also looked at the agreement between both scoring systems. So a total of 2,030 calves were sampled. Out of those, of course, they were matched. So there was 1,007 ill, 1,023 healthy. We had about 169 BRSV positive, 911 calves with aerobic pathogens, and about 1,234 with mycoplasma positive results. So we picked 929 calves that had Wisconsin score greater than or equal to five out of the 2,000. And in the analysis, we used 869, uh, 809 pairs of cases and controls. So they had to be paired by the time and uh, day of, of enrollment. So this figure here is kind of important because if you want to develop a scoring system, you can't use a scoring system to find the positive cases. There will be some bias there, almost like a perfect agreement. So we had to modify what, what, what a BRD case is using the, the, the multitude of, of data that we have, including microbiology. So one of the criteria was that if, if a calf was BRSV positive, which was, was 169 cases, all of them became BRD cases. Now, if, the, if we did detect Pastorella, Maltosta, or B. trehalosi, they really had to have a Wisconsin score of greater than or equal to five in order to be a case. 
and um, controls would, would, would be anything otherwise, which was aerob aerobic pa uh, microbiology positive uh, and Wisconsin score of less than four, less than or equal to four. So the categories, categories of the Wisconsin scoring system, I think uh, they were just presented to, so I'll move on from that. But the model results for BRD3, what I want to just grab your attention is that this, the coefficient is what dictated what score should be assigned. So for cuff, we had none or induced cuff versus spontaneous cuff, and the coefficient was 2.345. So we rounded coefficients. That gave it a score of 2. And so all the clinical signs, all six of them were 2, except for ocular uh, ear position, which was uh, a 5 right there. And if I hold stable, nasal discharge is 4. Other than that, cough, ocular discharge, rectal temperature, and abnormal respirations all got a score of two based on the model. To determine the cutoff, uh, we used ROC curves. And again, to my point that we kind of refrained from uh, estimating sensitivities or specificities just because, again, you, you can't really estimate the sensitivity based on a uh, of a scoring system based on another scoring system. We already used the McGurk system, so in that sense there would be some bias. We'd have uh, very high estimates. So for now, we just use the receiver operating characteristic curve to determine the point that most, uh, most calves are correctly or, or accurately classified, which was uh, at a score of 5. And so we see that that has a likelihood ratio of 10, and any score below that has a much lower likelihood ratio positive. So the summary of the scoring system is that if a calf shows up a, with an abnormal ear position, like an ear droop or a head tilt, uh, that's a five score already, and that attained the cutoff. From that, from that end, either this calf had BRD for quite a bit, that's one scenario, or it's about, about ready to start uh, showing more signs. And so for nasal discharge, if we see a calf with nasal discharge, that would be a score of four. So we'd have to have another clinical sign for it to uh, be a BRD status. And another scenario would have, if a calf would have three clinical signs of the remaining, then in that case it would be a, a, also a BRD status. For rectal temperatures, it wasn't really based on the, the scoring system. We don't need to get the rectal temperature in every calf that we look at. It's only if we get a score of four, because only then uh, a rectal temperature can tip the scale above the cutoff of five and be called a BRD case. So agreement-wise with the Wisconsin scoring system, we had a 92% agreement beyond chance. So excluding any chances of agreement due to just randomness, uh, it was 90.2. And so now that set us to go into another study which is to estimate the accuracy of that scoring system. And so for that, we use the nested case control design, meaning we'd go in and enroll cohorts of animals, calves, and we'd follow this cohort, but we actually are looking for cases and controls as they happen. Um, so we enrolled 543 calves from five premises. These premises were three dairies uh, in Tulare County and two calf ranches. That small calf ranch, that's 1,200 calves, was actually a conglomerate of three dairies that pull all their calves into this calf ranch. Uh, the larger calf ranch gets calf calves from also from Arizona and elsewhere in California. But this happened between April and September 2013. And about um, 422 were from dairies and 122 were from the calf ranches. And so the reason we decided to go into, other than the first premise that we had for the scoring system design, is we wanted to get heifers also, not just bull calves, and we wanted also to look at other breeds, uh, mainly jerseys. So. so the calf selection this time was basically what we saw from our experience with the calf ranch in the first study, which is a calf was probably flagged for further, further observation and a decision made about treatment if it happened to look like it was an ill calf. An ill is pretty vague and broad, but for our purpose, it was either depressed, loss of appetite, or had difficulty breathing. At that point, that calf was further examined uh, to determine if it was a case of control. 
Controls were also randomly sampled because we wanted to estimate uh, the sensitivity based on the entire population as if we actually looked at every single calf that was normal. And in a sense, the case control, the nested case control design allows you to try to capture every case that happens during the daily walk-bys that you do on the facility. So we also believe that we got quite a bit of the cases that would have happened during the study time. We excluded animals that had any antibiotics in the previous 10 days or were vaccinated in the last 14 days because that would interfere with the microbiology. All the cows were evaluated with the same protocol regardless if we thought it was a case or a control. Respiratory rate was determined prior to entering into the hutch and uh, the clinical signs were all recorded before case control assignment. Microbiology sample was very similar to the first study. For case assignments, uh, we used the criteria of the calf would have had to show uh, either auscultation abnormality on auscultation uh, or abnormality on ultrasound. And with ultrasound, we used a cutoff of one centimeter for any lesions. So for control assignment, as I said, it was randomly selected. Uh, so we'd have a randomization scheme and walk by the hutches that were flagged that day for uh, looking at. And some of these random calves that were selected, they would turn out to be a case, as you can imagine. So there are different iterations of analyzing the data, whether you include those randomly identified cases or not. But we'll come there in a minute. So 543, 223 cases and 320 controls. And out of the 223 cases, we had 166 uh, abnormal on auscultation and 172 abnormal on ultrasound. And 115 are common in those two, uh, 166 and 172. So 115 had both actually out of the 520. So gender-wise, of course, because we were on dairies more than calf ranches, so we had now 70% heifers, 30% bull calves. Breed-wise, about 67% Holsteins and 32% Jerseys. A small fraction for other than that. The age range that we looked at was between 16 and 130, 138 days with the median, with a mean of five, uh, 58 days. Yep. And so there's the distribution right there. So for M. bovis, uh, we had 194 Mycoplasma bovis, a, a few others that were non M. bovis species, with about half of the calves not culturing any Mycoplasma. For viral PCR, we had uh, only 12 BRSV, and IBR was one. A lot of coronaviruses, no BVD. So sensitivity and specificity using that reference status of abnormal ultrasound or abnormal auscultation was about 72% for the BRD3 and 70% for Wisconsin. There was no significant difference between them. For specificity, the so, uh, specificity for BRD3 was about 90% and for the Wisconsin was about 93% and that was a significant uh, difference at a P of 0.04. So compared to previous findings, uh, Bakzinski et al, they predicted lung, using lung consolidation as the reference. So we have a different reference here in terms of true BRD status than what we used. So the Wisconsin system had a sensitivity of 55.4% and a specificity of 58%. And I think the difference between our estimates, which are higher than that, way higher than that, is the difference in using consolidation only as the criteria versus auscultation or uh, ultrasound. But also beyond that, uh, really also differences in the technique. We went in, on our, in our ultrasound technique trying to examine like Dr. Olivet uh, did basically from the first intercostal space all throughout. Um, and again, there are other reference test options. And just to give you an idea, one option is to use, of course, ultrasound only, auscultation only, both in parallel, like in the data that I'm presenting right now. There is also calf side status at enrollment, which is more of a, a consensus opinion about, is this calf a BRD case right now as it's being enrolled or not? There's also another modified algorithm like in the first study we did, um, where we basically use virology again, uh, specifically uh, IBR, BRSV. If any of these calves are positive, they would be called a case. And if there is uh, aerobic or mycoplasma culture positive, 
they would have had to have this time ultrasound or auscultation past abnormal abnormalities to be called a case. And so the clinical presentation for, for cases is what, what, what I'm presenting right now, basically cases being abnormal and looking at the controls uh, uh, without adjusting for any weights of those controls, meaning scoring weights, probability sampling weights. There's another also approach which is using population approach for risk assessment and that we're currently working on. Uh, that incorporates any cases that were selected upon random uh, enrollment. So if we go up to a calf that was supposed to be enrolled and it's supposed to be enrolled as a random sample, it shows a case or becomes a case then we would include it also. And also weighing, survey weighting the controls. Uh, so that population approach for risk assessment is kind of our, our final goal and it's, 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 it's of great interest to us. So in conclusion, there are currently two published BRD scoring systems, the Wisconsin and the BRD3 system. They both have excellent agreement according to our data. And these systems could be used in the field at the point of treatment just because they're simple, accurate, and, and reliable. And reliability is still a question. We, we, I haven't seen any reliability studies, meaning inter-rater reliability, meaning you and I go out there and are we going to agree or not. Um, so in summary, again, the BRD, BRD3 variable Similar to Wisconsin, except it has an additional variable, a sixth variable, which is quality of respiration. It's assessed based on the calf adjacent to the calf you are looking at, or the calves around it. And we like that because it kind of adjusts for the heat and the temperature and all these problems that can confound your assessment, whether the calf is breathing hard or not. You can imagine in Tulare at 3 p.m. in August what the calves look like. So um, based on our BRD3, we try to dichotomize all the variables just to make it simpler in terms of yes or no for the lay person who walks the hutches every day. And we kind of, based on requests from the calf ranch that we originally were working on, they didn't want much jumping in and out of the hutch because of the biosecurity. So they chose to, uh, they really wanted us to, uh, they sp spoke about inducing cuff as being one thing they didn't like. So we removed that from the models. Um, they have similar sensitivity uh, and specificity, with the exception of the uh, 90 versus 93. How much that weighs, that's a question uh, to be looked at, I guess. So what's our current research? Uh, we're really looking at, at the population approach. If you were to use a random sample of calves out of uh, 500 calves on a dairy or 40,000 calf calf ranch, could you use a random sample to kind of assess the prevalence? And so that's where we're, we're using the scoring system right now. I know we are actually doing the inter-rater reliability also. It's actually ongoing right now. But once we have this, this tool, the population tool that can determine the prevalence of calves with BRD on a dairy or a, or a premise, then we can merge that with risk factor questionnaires. And at that point, uh, some of you may be familiar with like the Yoni's disease risk assessment tools, which is really kind of like the, 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 where this idea came from, where you have a set of known questions that are known risk factors that are also weighted based on the probability of this risk factor causing disease or being uh, attributing to disease, attributing to BRD. And once you fill these questions, you, 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 ha you, need, you need next an assessment of the prevalence of BRD. So you could use a scoring system uh, like the one we're presenting, BRD3. Once you do that, at the end of that tool, given the boxes of uh, uh, an examiner or a person filling that tool um, have filled or completed, there is a set of guidelines that immediately zoom in and focus on be it colostrum management, housing, uh, vaccination treatments that 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 these recommendations will be available and they're custom to every dairy uh, to that specific dairy that the, the, the tool is being run on or examined on so from that end that's really our ultimate goal there that risk assessment tool um, so I'd like to acknowledge the study herds and the calf nurseries that we worked on the UC extension specialists and farm advisors uh, BRD CAF collaborators, of course, which funded the, the initial 2000 CAF trial uh, on the large CAF ranch. CAF Lab for all their diagnostic and microbiology support. And also Dr. McGurk for this clinically smart scoring system. And uh, staff, graduate students, undergrads, I don't forget anyone, but also the funding agencies, USDA and UCANR. So with that, I hope I uh, didn't uh, elongate or take your... <laughs> 
make you nap or something. <laughs> so, thank you.